So we finally got the extra accessories in for the Kane TV Optimus. Now, some of you guys may get this already as part of your order, but the ones who have ordered early um, actually got this package shipped uh, separately. So <clears throat> basically the dual handles is uh, what they shipped later because it wasn't ready yet. So we'll take a look at the new dual handles. Okay, so now that we have everything unboxed here, um, let's put the dual handles together. So the front handle here is going to face away from you. And then if you look at one of them, you'll see a little red knob here. That's where you mount your joystick. So if you want your joystick on the right or on the left, that's where you can position it. And you want the joystick obviously facing you. And you want this to be most likely pointing down if that's where you want your handles to go. So you'll screw this in here. And then you've got these fat rubber grips that screw in on underneath. And that's how we assemble one side. So they ship it to you like this. It breaks down small if you guys are traveling, if you guys want to pack it up. So it looks very good, looks really well made. Um, in this position here, you can use it in the underslung mode or you could flip it around and use it in the inverted mode. Um, so this is one of the reasons why the Optimus is a little bit more expensive than the other gimbals out there is they give you so much stuff. So remember, you get the dual handles, you get the single handle, they usually give you a uh, kind of tripod balancing stand right here. So this goes underneath the single handle so it makes it easier to balance. They give you two batteries, your wireless joystick, and you know, a bunch of other stuff. You get this uh, magic arm over here. They give you a clamp if you want to clamp like your phone. Some guys shoot with their phones. So a lot of stuff all in the, uh, the package. But today we're going to talk about balancing the Optimus because a lot of people are getting it and they want to know how to balance it the best way they can. So we're going to go through that right now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add it to the um, base here the tripod base so that we can balance our gimbal without it falling over on us and it'll allow us to have two hands. So now that we have the plate on here, um, make sure your camera is set up the way you're going to balance it, which means take off your lens caps, get the battery in place, anything that needs to go in the camera, put it in there because that's going to affect the balance. So make sure everything's on there and then we're going to put this on the gimbal. Now remember the motor sits on the left hand side of the camera. Slide that in. Now right now we're just going to lock it down in place and then we're going to start going through the balancing steps um, in a certain order the way I like to do it. Alright so as you can see uh, it's not balanced very well at all. Also when you're balancing you got to make sure you get your battery on because this is the rear counterweight for what you're going to balance on the yaw. So make sure you get your battery in here. So we're all set up. All right, so to balance this gimbal, the very first thing I like to do is um, at least get your roll set up, right? So we want this camera to sit kind of as level as possible. So it's not over here. I'll show you what I mean. If we loosen the bottom, so this bottom plate right over here, if we were to shift the camera side to side, you'll see how it just kind of leans over to the right. So don't worry about anything else. We want to get this balanced out. So we're going to balance the roll. So we're going to slide this over until it stays pretty good. And it doesn't fall on either side. So let's lock that down. All right, next thing I, I like to do is I like to point the lens up to the ceiling like this, and it should hold this position. And you notice that it drops down on the bottom. Uh, sometimes it'll drop down this way, but here it's dropping down to the bottom. And if you look at it in this plane, um, we have more weight here on this side than on this side. I'll show you what it looks like on this motor. So this is our pivot point here. Uh, so we have too much weight on this side of the motor instead of this side of the motor, and it's dropping. It's dropping on this side. So what do we have to do? We have to move it this way. To do that, we're going to use this little dial here. We want to make sure this is unlocked and then we're going to turn this little red knob so that we can move this camera this way. And if you're holding it this way, it's, it's going up. So let's do that. Let's dial this in. And you'll see it starts to uh, affect it already. We're not high enough here. All 
All right, so you notice that it's not falling either on the bottom or the top. It's just kind of sitting with the lens pointed straight up. So that means that we have good center of gravi gravity uh, here. So now we're going to um, lock this down so it doesn't move. And now we're going to work on this one right here. So again, if we hold the camera in this position and it falls over on its back, we have too much weight on this side of the motor and not on this side. So that means we have to push it over this way. That's being done by moving the camera forward and back on the, uh, the QR plate. Uh, I'm sorry, this knob right over here. So we're going to loosen the knob, push the camera forward, right, this way. So let's do that. Loosen this up, push the camera forward. See that? There you go. Let's lock it down. Now, just to note, this little knob over here, um, it is a little bit long, and if you guys are finding that it's not in the right position, you could pull it away, pull it away from itself, uh, pull it out, and then reposition this lever. So um, it's spring-loaded, so you could lock it, reposition the lever, uh, and then lock it again and get it in the right position you want. But you, it's spring-loaded, so just try pulling it, and you'll know what I mean. All right, so we're pretty good already. The last thing we want to do is we want to balance uh, the yaw, all right? So we're going to look at this motor over here. Now, what we do with that is we hold the gimbal sideways. So I'm going to start to tilt it sideways. Well, see that? That just kind of, it, it just lost itself right there already. You see that? Now, what's happening here is we have all the weight on the battery and not uh, over on the camera side. And what we're doing is we're looking at the um, yaw as our pivot point now. So we need to move the weight this way so that this doesn't drop down. And uh, we slide that here on this uh, yaw platform. So we're going to loosen the lever on the side. We're going to turn the dial on the back until we could drive the battery going forward. And you'll see it again um, when we, when we re produce that uh, sideways tilt that it should not swing over. Seems like I have to do it a lot, so I'm going to do that. Let's try that again. So here we go. We're going to start to tilt sideways. And it falls over, but a lot slower. Now, this is really important. A lot of people miss the yaw. A lot of people miss the yaw. And the reason why it's important is as you're moving your gimbal around, you swing it over. You don't want your camera to be thrown off. You want it to stay very level, right? So yaw is very important as well. So we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep adjusting this. And then we'll tighten this up. We'll try it again. All right, so we're set. Let's tilt it to the side. Oop, you see what happened? I went too far. Camera has too much weight. So let's pull it back a little bit. Try that. Look at that. Doesn't drop on the camera. Doesn't drop on the battery. Uh, just a little bit. Not too bad though. You see how it makes a little bit of a difference? So if it's dropping down on the battery, I'm just going to push it up a little bit. Try it again. It's good. It's it's good. So we have our gimbal balance. Let's turn it on. And we should be all set. And now when, uh, again, when you're kind of tilting your gimbal over to the side, the motors aren't going to struggle. It's not going to like want to throw itself around mechanically because everything is unbalanced. Uh, it's going to have a better chance of keeping your footage stabilized and smooth and not struggle under unbalanced weight. So you want to make sure that everything in your gimbal is balanced as best as possible if you guys are looking for um, the best results. Again, don't overload the gimbals. This is designed for the smaller mirrorless cameras, uh, smaller mirrorless lenses. So if you're using lens adapters and big full frame lenses, it's probably not a good idea. Um, this thing will work at its best with the smaller setups. Um, but that's it. That's how you would balance the uh, Optimus gimbal. Hopefully that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, 
Um, hit me up at the blog, cheesycam.com.